the episode was called Willful Damage, and um, Net Lisa and I played these two university students who uh, had gone out to um, to do something, um, and another group had gone out and had broken a satellite, and we had got done for that by mistake. And so I remember the um, my first close up, Mr. DeMille was the, you know, when we got done for something that we actually hadn't done. And it was, you know, the moment of camera right on you, you know, deliver the goods. And, um, you know, that, that being able to be there for, for that, that moment, that was a great, great lesson. And wonderful, one, I mean, wonderful to meet Terence Cooper, uh, you know, one of the great, you know, legends, if you like. And, um, that, that interaction with that, that generation, and Don Selwyn, you know, I think that's very important. It was a very intense experience. It was shot a, a quite a compressed period of time. And if memory serves, we actually lived in the house. So it was very much, um, uh, you're almost like you were actually going through it. And John Watson, who played the, uh, the, the character who was dying, uh, who was a very frail, slender man to start with, had lost so much weight that um, it wasn't hard to, to, you know, to be there. And of course, it, it, this was, I think, 1985, and it was, uh, the, the subject matter was, was extremely potent. So you, you really felt that you know, you were working on something that was um, special, you know, and um, very, uh, for this country, uh, on a subject that was never, never dealt with. So great writing from um, Peter and Stuart, and, uh, you know, I think uh, an important piece of um, filmmaking, you know. Well, I can remember the, the day very clearly. I went into the audition room. Peter Elliott was actually the reading uh, opposite. And um, I, I just got a sense that I had hit the audition right down the middle. And um, I was working on uh, Erebus and uh, I got the phone call from my agent to say that I'd got the part. And I can remember I called my, my mum and um, I, I couldn't get through and the message was, I got gloss. And of course, she got this message from the, the, the switchboard, Simon's got gloff, <laughs> which is uh, the, the running joke with my mum thereafter. They had set out to make stars, and the, um, in its um, style, in its writing, in its uh, urban setting, it was very Auckland, uh, very conspicuous consumption, very fashion oriented. You know, um, it was. Uh, groundbreaking, if you like, and where something like Close to Home had been very suburban, um, very cardigans. These are shoulder pads, and that was the men, you know. A lot of fast cars, a lot of champagne, um, as indeed the late 1980s were all about. And um, very smart writing, you know, great, uh, great writers who wrote for the characters, and over time, they would write for you, the actor. And so I think that the writing improved. It was only, I think we only shot 54 episodes, 25 years ago now. But, um, you know, to this day, I still, I still get um, clocked for, you know, aren't you that guy off glass? It's a certain generation that remember, you know, we all move through time. Paul Churchill was one of the great baddies that I played, uh, I mean, a truly a psychopath. And um, he appeared in the series, uh, I think, four or five, it was over, over a couple of years, four or five times. And um, each time getting uh, progressively more psychotic. And um, wonderful to play, wonderful to play. Because, you know, the, the less that you the less psychotic you are, the more dangerous you are. And, um, you know, by the time uh, we got to the end, because the character didn't get killed off, um, I end up, 
handcuffing Craig Parker to the um, mast of this yacht and um, injecting him with um, this this drug which is going to knock them out and setting the yacht on autopilot for Chile. And the last shot of the character was him standing on, on Cheltenham Beach, sort of, you know, waving ta-ta. But, um, you know, I guess, I guess over my career, I, I haven't played that many goodies. Maybe it's just the natural set of my face. But I, I, uh, I have to say that, you know, playing the, the, uh, the bad guys, it does give you great, you know, there's a lot of scope there. Garth uh, was a very brave filmmaker, a very original filmmaker, and his aim in making that film of how love, you know, is a universal. And, you know, setting it in New Zealand and giving all forms of love a voice and a nobility, those were, I think, um, you know, that's what, what stood out from the script, is that each of the characters had issues that they had to work through, but, you know, each of them had a, a, um, a, a nobility and, a, you know, a respect. So that, it, you know, I was, I didn't see my character and wasn't interested in playing a, a screaming queen, you know, as I'm desperate. This, this, you know, this was a man of, of means, of, of uh, you know, he, uh, ind he was independent, and that he, his love for Dean's character, you know, it, it wasn't just, you know, uh, a dial a rent boy. It had to be based, it was about love, not lust. And the great, one of the great scenes in that film, early on when Dean comes around, and, you know, there's this montage, of, you know, we get stoned and we get drunk, and then he collapses on the bed and uh, I take his uh, trousers off and of course there is a moment where it looks like I'm going to have my wicked way with him and I tuck him in so he just goes to sleep. And that, that, that level of respect for the characters. And I loved it that it had a happy ending as well, that it wasn't, you know, the end of Camille, you know, that everyone, everyone found what they were looking for. How quickly one goes from playing a son to a father is all I can say, you know, and um, uh, it just, you know, it just, the, the transition, this is how, how life accelerates the older that you get, is that, you know, all of a sudden, I've got a, a daughter, you know, who's, you know this young woman, a beautiful young woman, and I'm the father. And that, that, that happens very quickly. And, you know, that, that as an actor, I mean, you're playing support for the young people in, in that show. And, um, you know, Jeffrey was a, a doctor with, a, you know, a, 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 a selfish, conceited man who had issues, issues with his marriage and um, more than met his match of the um, Fran McMahon character, where you know they sort of they sort of found love, they found each other, you know. Well, I feel very lucky to um, have got the job when the jobs come along, and I don't think you can ever take that for granted, you know. This is a very small market for actors, and um, you know I I have a, quite a distinct presence. So I think I've been very lucky, you know, to be able to have worked, uh, you know, to be able to have the theater to support that, and I think to be able to feed into that. One of the things about getting old, it's like I said before, is that, you know, you go from playing a son to play a father, is that new roles, present themselves, and they might not always be how you see yourself, um, but that's, that's part of the adventure of life.